più trai farfalloni amoroso, notte giorno di torno girano, delle belle torbando al riposo. G'day everybody and welcome back. If you watched the update that I did, the mega up mega update a couple of nights ago, um, we discovered we've got a, a bearing issue on the alternator side of this engine. So we need to split the crankcase. Just want to start by saying that I'm a home gamer. I'm just working trying to fix my bike. This particular series with the 900 SS has attracted quite a bit of attention. There are a lot of very uh, knowledgeable eyes on this project, which is a little bit intimidating. So, you know, not only do we have the likes of Gow and Locke in, in Sydney and um, Twan Van den Bigler over in Van den Bigler Performance, but now I've even received at least one view and a critique from Brad the Bike Boy, uh, who's a Victorian-based guy and a Ducati expert. I'll put a link to his website in the description because, my goodness me, the amount of information that guy's got is unbelievable. So, I'm, <laughs> I'm a little bit nervous moving forward, but um, like I said, I'm just, I'm just a bloke, not a trained Ducati mechanic. I'm uh, just trying to fix my bike. The, the wonderful, wonderful thing is that you know, when you know you've got guys of this calibre watching you, um, while they're not able to help you live real time as I make mistakes in front of everybody, they are able to help post-production, I guess, when after viewing and leaving comments, that I can then channel through to you other guys that are at home um, with your own two-valve Ducati engine and thinking about what you might be faced with. So that is the power of this wonderful community. But spare a thought for poor old me, who's got all of these expert eyes watching him. So, hey, welcome Brad the Belt Bike Boy. Come to the party. Come and um, throw us throw us any any tidbits that you've got. All right, moving on. Um, best I can figure out, I need to pretty well pull everything off both sides of the engine. So. Um, I'm going to take the oil pump off, the primary gear, the belt drive stuff on this side, flip it around, then we'll pull out the starter motor and the um, gear selective assembly and, and everything else. Let's stop waffling and start unbolting. Still bagging and tagging everything. All right, from what I understand, this primary gear can be a bit of a pain in the ass to get off. Um, hopefully my gear puller will get on there. If not, I might have to pop down to Super Cheap Auto, which is just down the road, and buy a smaller two-leg puller, but we'll give it a go. Um, but before I do, I think I'll try and get the belt drive gear off. If you remember, I didn't, I didn't have a tool to remove those uh, when I was pulling the cylinder heads down. So I've actually only just now, hopefully this works, I've chopped it up a bit. I've just hacked up a 21mm socket. Um, I'm going to try and use that to undo this. I've got, I've got this old cam belt. I'm going to try and hold it. Hopefully that works. And it's not too tight and doesn't break the teeth off this. Oh, truth, it's uh, a bit tighter than I thought it might be. Try this. Try 
this. Man, that's on there tighter than what I thought it would be. might require me destroying that nut just to get it off for there and then uh, replacing it with a new one which I probably should replace with a new one anyway. I'm going to try and knock it off this way. Get medieval with it. It ain't moving. Off, isn't it? Little Woodruff keys in here. Obviously, individual one for each pulley. All right, let's have a look at this primary gear, shall we? This is going to be the go. <coughs> oh, I don't have a deep enough socket. Can I get it? <coughs> yep. Now it's keyed, but I do believe, from what I understand, it's on a um, it's on a taper and it's very tight. What I'm hoping is that my two-legged hydraulic puller will fit in there. Yeah, it should be okay. The way these um, the way these hydraulic ones work is that they've they've got the main thread that you screw down with and then then there's um, this smaller one here that puts hydraulic load on it making sure we're not leaning on something we shouldn't be leaning on I've got quite a bit of weight on that then what you can do with these uh, Hydraulic things is very without hitting it that hard, you're going to bend this thread. Give it a few shocks, load it up a bit more.
Jeez, weren't kidding when it says it's on there. Wow, holy dooly. Wow, that pinged right across the floor. Man, you weren't kidding. That was on there. I had some load on that thing, I tell you. All right, I'll, uh, I'll pack that, I'll just go and pack that gear puller away and uh, we'll come back. All right, so it's off the taper. I um, I shoot this in 24 frames a second, but I'm going to try and slow that down. I wish I was shooting it in 120 frames per second. Man, that took off. All right, let's spin him around and uh, get everything off the other side of the engine now. All right, well, here's hoping we don't have uh, the same sorts of dramas over this side. Just in case you're wondering why I needed, why I made that tool to screw the alternator side cover off, these are permanent magnets and um, they have a tendency to want to hang on to the laminated iron toroid ring um, as part of the, the alternator windings. So that's why that, I'm just trying to work out here why this won't just pull off of there. There we go. I'm going to take the pickups off, but we first need to note where they're actually set up to so that we can set it up again when the time when the time comes to reassemble it. We don't have ignition timing issues. photograph of that so that we get it spot on Sorry, I didn't have the camera very well set up. Just pulling the key out of the back of that shaft as well. Now, I'm, I'm going to leave the uh, pickups attached because this, I'd have to remove these plugs to get all of that through from what I can see. So I think I'll just leave it all attached. In order to keep all this together, what I'm going to do is cable tie it all together. You've got a sprag in here as well, which is a one-way one -way bearing, and the sprag um, is part of your starter motor assembly, so it allows it to drive in one direction, and then when the starter stops, that gear will stop with it, and everything can spin around it. Oh, so let me just, let me just get my shit sorted here, so because I'm frightened of losing things. So I'll get this sorted, and we'll be right back. All right, like I said earlier, I'm going to leave the pickups just sort of hanging around. Uh, hopefully that doesn't come back to bite me. Let's get this uh, starter motor out. We'll start with this intermediate gear here. We'll pass the bench at home this morning before I left and uh, noticed my small 
external circular pliers, and I thought, ah, I won't need those. <laughs> These are a little bit too big, but... Sometimes you got to do what you got to do. Just got to watch all these little shims and everything and make sure they stay in the right place. All right, starter motor. Everything's got Loctite on it, so it's going to all go back together with Loctite. That's loose. Key in there as well. Okay, so now selector. Right, I think we're nearly at the stage where we need to um, take this, what's left of this motor, out of the frame and um, remove all the, the case bolts and split him apart. Got to remove this guy, which has got a spring in there. Shift drum retaining. Got its own gasket. All right, let's get these crankcases apart. There's always someone who objects to me using this, but if you don't like it, don't use it. Got to be careful doing that kind of thing with these ball drivers. I've snapped them off in screws before. Well, I had the rubber mallet out ready to go, but it's already started to separate. And now it's going to bleed oil everywhere. Yep, 
is our problem child. Well, I just had to sort out a big oily mess. A couple of things. I found the shim on on the clutch side is uh, broken through. It's in two pieces. Uh, the shim on the other side's okay. <coughs> we, we'll put all new shell bearings and everything in that while we're in here. We'll just replace all the bearings. Uh, the oil pressure relief valve popped out as we separated in this shim here also. But yeah, I, uh, I hadn't drained that sump very well and there was oil everywhere. Alright, let's see if we can get this. Just want to be careful here. We don't lose anything. We've got a shim on the top. Two shims on the top. Bearing. Shim. It'll be the bearing in a race, but it can stay there. Uh, pull that selective fork out, and hopefully this whole shaft can come away. No, oh, we have to do the other one. Okay, now I've got him. Wow. There's a problem. Well, let's not lose everything here. It's just completely munted that in a in a ball bearing race. So it's a bushed type roller bearing. And uh, I'm not sure how well you're gonna pick that up on the camera. So something's either gone through it or it's had um, oil starvation. But there's our uh, yeah, there's our damage. I'll just um, remove this other shaft. There we go. Just trying to keep it all together. So input shaft, output shaft. Shift drum. This watch has got shims as well. And there we have it. So the next thing oh, I better take that pressure relief valve out. I'll bag and tag all that. So according to everybody that would know, this is um and I guess the good news for all you guys that are concerned about your own bikes, um, this is this is a rarity. And I can well imagine, it's a bit like an electric motor, that you have a big bearing on the load side, and then on the other end is often just even a bronze bush. Um, the load side for the bike, of course, is on the clutch side. And this is just um, holding everything in place. So it's not like there's a massive load on that bearing. So it has to have been either oil starvation or something's gone through it or it was a crib death and SKF supplied a bad bearing or it was installed in a manner that damaged it. They're the only, uh, the only ways that it could uh, do what it's done. Just jumped in the ute and about to head home, and I had a thought about the um, that bearing failure and a potential 
I'm not saying it is, but food for thought, uh, a potential failure mode. I had a very badly leaking slave cylinder for quite a while. And because I don't ride the bike very often, because it burns too much friggin' oil, um, it sits in the garage on, on the paddock stand. Now, if all the oil runs out, it gets replaced with brake fluid. Just a food for thought. Um, I'm trying to, I'm, I'm cr clutching at straws, trying to work out why that bearing has failed. And um, I guess potentially that, that could be a problem. Um, let me know what you think. Yep, I'll just check out each bearing as I go. And um, we'll get all the bits to put it back together again. That's what you got to do. Um, like I said, you can't use the ostrich theory and just stick your head in the sand and pretend it's going to go away because it's not. Um, as much as it <laughs> would have been nice to just say nothing and um, put a full sail sign on the bike. No, you can't do that. All right, so uh, we know what we've got to do. We've got to buy some new bearings, do the bloody lot. New uh, shell bearings also for the uh, Conrod, uh, Conrod big ends. Um, wait till we get the parts down from Gown Lock and also I'll probably just order these uh, SKF bearings. I'll just order them through the local supplier. Um, the dearest bits for, are going to be the cylinder head stuff and the genuine Ducati parts that we needed to order from Gown Lockers. As sharp as their sharpest pencil is, it's still going to be um, a fairly costly little exercise. I'll get new gaskets, um, although I probably won't use the paper ones on Twan's advice. He said just use a silicon type sealer. In fact, he recommended one that they use all the time at Big Alar Performance. Um, I can't remember what it's called. I'll put it on the screen. I did have a quick look and it looks like it's a Loctite product. Um, it's not cheap, but I think I'll buy a tube of that. The benefit of using that particular silicon is that it's uh, transparent, so it's or translucent. It's clear, so when you push your cases together, what did Twine say? It won't look like a gummy bear being squashed out between the the cases. So thanks for watching. More than half of you are that are watching aren't subscribed, so go ahead and click that. Don't forget to like and comment, and I will catch you next time on Andy's Motorcycle Obsessions. Bye for now.